This is the story of how an ancient killer might just save your life. In the winter of 1665, the Great Plague swept through London, killing a third of its population. The effect of the plague was as devastating as a biological weapons attack would be on a modern city. And yet out of the devastation came survivors, super survivors. Men and women mysteriously resistant to this deadly disease. Why did they survive? Why didn't everybody die? Now, through a series of groundbreaking experiments and archaeological discoveries, one man is hoping to find the answer. The descendants of the super survivors still walk among us. They would have maybe 15 or 20 doctors just literally staring at me and scratching their heads. Everyone I knew was sick, and I wasn't sick. Does the Great Plague hold the key to surviving today's infectious diseases? And can our own bodies teach us how to outsmart nature's most vicious killers? What do you do? I had a wife, I had kids, I owned a business, I had responsibilities. So in order to provide for them, I decided to take that risk and continue to use that product. Jameson assumed that he would contract HIV and die. I would go in, they would have maybe 15 or 20 doctors just literally staring at me and scratching their heads, trying to figure out, this guy took this product, everybody else is positive, but you're as healthy as an ox. And that was the big question. Well, okay, you know, let's, let's find out what this big mystery is. As it turns out, Jameson had inherited a genetic mutation. They called it Delta 32. When HIV infects a normal cell, it does so by latching on to a protein called a receptor. This receptor is the virus's doorway into the cell. In Bill Jameson's case, the Delta 32 mutation knocks it out. There's no receptor and no way for HIV to enter the cell so the chance of infection is blocked. After years of searching, had O'Brien and his colleagues finally found what they were looking for? When we first discovered CCR5 Delta 32, it was a whopper. It was basically the equivalent of pulling out a 300-pound marlin out of the sea on our fishing expedition because it caused complete resistance to HIV in all of the people who carried two copies of it, one from each parent. They now understood what the mutation was, that you inherited it from both parents, and that it gave you immunity to HIV. But to help non-carriers, they wanted to harness the power of Delta 32. That meant understanding everything about it. Why did some people carry this mutation? Where did it come from? According to the theory of evolution, mutations are produced by mistakes in the genetic code. If they provide a positive benefit to the carrier, they survive into the next generation. So Delta 32 must have helped previous generations in some way, long before AIDS arrived on the scene. Geneticists call it a selective pressure, something in the environment that favored the people who carried this mutation, either reproductively, they had more babies, or in survival. There was no evidence of increased fertility amongst Delta 32 carriers. So O'Brien knew he was looking for an event in the past that had spared those with the mutation and killed off the rest. We were looking for some sort of breathtaking, cataclysmic event that basically wiped out millions of people, but differentially, according to whether or not they carried this gene. We thought it probably was an infectious disease of some sort, um, like HIV, but we knew it wasn't HIV AIDS because that disease has only been around for less than two generations. The answer, again, lies in the DNA. If you know how to read the genetic code correctly, it will point back to the time in the past when the mutation developed. When carriers survived, 
and non-carriers didn't. The length of the segment around the Delta 32 is a surrogate, if you will, for time. So we examined that variation. We estimated the time elapsed since Delta 32 was last strongly favored. And that number came up to be 700 years, smack in the middle of the 14th century. This is a major revelation. Delta 32 had a significant impact in the middle of the 14th century. The time when bubonic plague, the Black Death, first began to terrorize the populations of Europe. The Black Death was probably the greatest epidemic in history. Something of the order of 25 to 30 million Europeans have died. O'Brien began to wonder if Delta 32 carriers were better equipped to survive bubonic plague. And that was when he connected another part of the puzzle. The last major outbreak of bubonic plague in Europe was the Great Plague of 1665. A much higher proportion of people seem to have survived that epidemic than survived earlier outbreaks of the disease. Is this evidence of the Delta 32 mutation at work? It could have been that the survivors of the Black Death passed down genes that protected their descendants from the Great Plague of the 17th century. If O'Brien is right, Delta 32 doesn't just confer immunity to AIDS. It is even more powerful. The next step is to try and find a group of people who are directly descended from plague survivors. If the theory is correct, Tests will show that a high number of them are Delta 32 carriers. Just like Delta 32, they stop the virus by blocking the portal through which it enters cells. For Spike, the results have been extremely encouraging. Within weeks of first taking the drug, the T cells that support his immune system began to recover. My T cell counts doubled and my viral load had gone undetectable which was uh, also quite a surprise. And within the next three months after that, my viral load stayed undetectable, my T cells had doubled up again. If it hadn't come into my life, I probably wouldn't be here. AIDS, SARS, leukemia, prostate cancer, breast cancer, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, the litany of diseases that fill our hospitals. Discovering how these defenses work explicitly, pinpointing the exact gene, giving us a mechanism. Well, then we know what to go after. Then we know how to develop treatments that are effective and clear out these hospitals from these chronic diseases that we cannot treat. We are in the middle of a scientific revolution that could change the way we treat sickness. It's a revolution that began in death and suffering centuries ago. And as threats continue to emerge from all corners of the biological world, it may be the mysteries and miracles of the human body itself that provide our ultimate line of defense. <laughs>